guys, welcome back to Naughty Styles. We are in Antalya Free Zone, Turkey, and we are at Bering Yacht Shipyard. And we're here to give you a glimpse of what it takes to build a real world-class explorer yacht, like this one behind me. of Bering Yacht. Say hello everyone. <laughs> Welcome. Hello. So where's the where's the big boss? He's here. <laughs> oh. That doesn't look That's like him. That's not him at that all. That doesn't look like him. I see him's right there. Oh there he is. He is pretending he's working. <laughs> hello, we're back. Can we come in? <laughs> Welcome. We are at the Bering shipyard headquarters right here main office by the way i love that sign what does it say it says steal the best steal the best with steel live your dreams no place too far your ideal yacht designed to be timeless engineered for safety there we go love there's it. a philosophy we are back with alexei and we're going to show you guys everything we can in the next half an hour or what I was, as I'm along this video gonna be, it's probably gonna be longer than half an hour. <laughs> yeah. But we're just gonna try to cramp it all in <laughs> and uh, see what we can show you. Get you guys a good idea like how these incredible yachts are actually getting built a little bit behind the scenes and um, couldn't do it with anyone better than Alexi himself. So I'm um, pretty excited about that. You mentioned that we might be able to see the biggest one that you have built right now and yes. built, which is 145. 145. Is, is it, can we really go on? Yeah, and it's really big. Let's do <laughs> this. Really big. Let's do this. Let's go. Yeah, this is 145. We're standing under the swim platform. This giant thing, it's, it's a thruster above us. What is a little bit different in this picture compared to any boat of this size, we have these massive skags, which protecting the shaft line and protecting the props and all the running gear, designed to deflect any, any floating debris. Also, it's protecting from grounding, so you can ground, but with no damage. Wait, you're saying... Technically, you can ground this 145-foot boat. Uh, technically, you better not to do yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but in unlikely event that like it's may Bahamas, happen, like in the Bahamas, in the soft sand, in the soft sand or coral reef, doesn't matter. You will touch the ground and have no damage to the running gear, because the, all the bottom on this boat is uh, 10 mm. We have an ice belt which is 12 mm, it's a, it's a reinforcement around the waterline area. If your tightness goes down and you're in a flat yeah. area, yeah. this boat will sit upright, despite its size. This 145 footer will sit better, upright. Better, better not to try it on this size. On the small size, we've done it not once, not twice. But this wow. is a, a 500 ton boat, and you better not to do it. Wow. So, I mean, it almost looks like a catamaran from it here. Does, it's it so does. crazy. <laughs> so all our boats have a zero degree inclination. So it's a perfectly, the, the thrust, the vector of thrust is perfectly horizontal. There is no stern lift or, or anything like this. So you can see the size of prop will fit here. Are we really going to go inside? Yeah, let's go. So 
So what stage is she in? She is seven months from completion. Okay. Seven to eight months. We're applying the fairing. We're assembling the interiors inside. Majority of interiors already manufactured. I would suggest we take a quick walk alongside and then we get in. Here you can see the beach club. Uh -huh. This is all beach club area with hammam. This side opens down. It's your beach area, and these gates is open up. Wow. Yeah, the garage, like a garage opening. Yeah, this is the garage. So yeah. this completely opens. Ah, okay, got it. This opens also down. So you have a pier here. Yep. So you can launch your fleet from here, yep. and you have your little pier separate from the beach club. So like a like a balcony or a terrace. Balcony, terrace. Yes, terrace. Terrace. So this, this this whole side is going out. And what is going to be here? Grill. Grill as well. So engine room is down there. This is the fairing. You can see how sculptured this boat is. So in order to get a perfect super yacht surface, you know, in some areas the fairing gonna get as sick as that. It's all Alex Seal, super strong tough. You can all take it down only with a chisel. For the people that don't know what that is, can you guys explain what, what a fairing is? Well, here's a steel hole. Yeah. But the hole, as you see, you have welds on there. Yeah. You know what? I'm actually can probably yeah, explain can it better explain? than I can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how you try. No? You know, you never can make a perfect steel hole, and you probably all seen the commercial boats. They're steel. You can see the welds. Yes. Yeah. Things are imperfect. You can see the footprints of uh, frames inside. Yeah. To cover it all and make it super yacht look. Yes. Uh, you have to apply fairing. It's a very strong compound. Uh, it's epoxy based. Okay. Of course, you see, when the, for the people who concern about rust, you have to penetrate this first to get okay. to the steel. That's a lot to penetrate. It's also several layers of primers before we apply this. Got it. And then several layers of primers after we apply that. The steel is literally encapsulated. You don't see the steel exposed. When it's encapsulated, it will stay for centuries. So, it's not getting tired, it's not getting old. So you were saying the other day, which I would love to get on camera, it's basically like, you know, you hit something with this, right? Yes. And you really get to the point of where it, it's to the steel. As long as you treat it, don't just leave it, nothing's gonna happen. All you have to do in case you, you damage it and you see the exposed steel. Right. In a matter of hours, it yeah. will show the signs of corrosion. All you need to do is apply the phosphoric acid with a cloth. It will eat up the rust and then immediately you spray on a primer, uh -huh. which get in a chemical bond with the steel and completely protect it. Okay. Then you apply another primer and you're good to go for years until you decide so to So if you're in the middle restore. of nowhere, this happens, you obviously have these you things on board. You don't have to do anything. You don't have you to just do anything. Wait. You just wait until you... You, you just can. wait until you're in the proper place and have time for this. What is the thickness of the steel? The sides of this hole is, I believe, six. You can see here... Uh, six what? The, what? Six millimeters. Millimeters. Quarter of an inch. Oh yeah, right, right yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Right, there right there, it's a 12 millimeter. It's half an inch. Okay. Steel. You put a piece of steel into yeah. the water yeah. Yeah. and there is no electrolysis introduced to this. The steel corrodes in the salt water in the ocean salinity 0.2 millimeters a year. So every five years a millimeter will be gone every five years. So for this underwater hull, you have uh, 50 years to deteriorate with no protection. But no protection okay, at all. Whatsoever. Like, yeah. Even if yeah. we wouldn't touch this like you see here, yeah, yeah. there's nothing done to this hull. Yeah. If we would launch it, it will last for 50 years. You will be dead before it's corroded. And so is the myth. It's dead as yeah. well. I'm sometimes surprised how naive people to, to follow this. All the super yachts are built exactly this way they was built like this for years and everybody considering this is the top of yacht manufacturing this gorgeous super yacht they last for years they build of steel and aluminum because no other way around to go any size bigger than you know 40 meters yep. you go this way we build it in 20 meters steel aluminum if you build it in fiberglass it's an attempt to save cost to save money because you have a mold yeah. and you just duplicate. It takes for us five months to construct even small hole because we're stitching it and welding it from ground zero. Yeah, and it takes uh, uh, maybe two months 
to fabricate fiberglass boat uh, of the same size. So that's the only difference. But the proper way to build a displacement boat is a steel and aluminum. There is no way around it. Oh, it's gonna be noisy now. So from here on, it starts the living quarters. And I think at this point, we better go up inside yeah. and see everything from inside. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's a stern. Imagine this whole stern going up and this is make a shade here. The transformer extend out. Look at the thickness of this. I feel like I'm on a tank. And then you can lower it down in the water and just yeah. comfortably wow. step into the ocean. Amazing. It is an explorer. It's definitely a platform for serious though, like submarines. We will see it uh, where well, you can carry up to nine meter tenders up on top and so it's it's a serious stuff. So here is the cockpit. We're about uh, 31 feet wide. I mean... Hello! <laughs> <laughs> that is wow, incredible. this is amazing. You guys, this is steel. Steel right here. Everything is steel. From this deck up is aluminum. A lot of people ask you, how do you weld aluminum? It's not right. Here's the material. It's called tree clad. It's bimetallic plate where aluminum and steel connected by blast on atomic level. We weld steel to steel and aluminum to aluminum. That's it. Everybody's doing this. Before it was bolting through the gaskets but it's in the past, last 20 years, Fused everything together. goes like this. So it's the proper way to connect aluminum. Also, you see the headroom here. Yeah, no kidding. Here is oh, 2.6 meters. In the feet, it's eight and a half. We put a lot of insulation in the floor and all the floor as well as all the interiors are floating. Oh, wow. So this is the vibration and sound insulation. We apply the damp paste, it's rubbery substance, and then place this uh, steel tiles. It's uh, zinc steel, so to prevent any sort of vibration or anything. And then there's still a subfloor. This is a subfloor, and yeah. it's, it's suspended. You see this black is a rubbery stuff, it's a silomer. Everything get attached to the steel hole through this suspension. Downstairs we will see the ceiling suspension, wall suspension. So the whole interior is floating. No wonder they're so quiet and you don't hear that's, anything. That's why it's so quiet. Feel a little bit remote from the action. You see outside is crazy but inside is quiet. Steel boats are not flexing as much as fiberglass boats. On the smaller boats you never hear the squeaking. Doesn't matter what is outside, what kind of storm it is. It's dead silent inside. It's not, the, the, the noise is not There's increasing. There's no squeaking you get on the fiberglass. So glass even glass. on the bearing, let's say 77. Yes. Same or similar building. Same, same technology. Same, same, technology. same, same. Everything the same. The thing is we're bringing super yacht into the small site. We're not trying to save money on the small Yeah, you're not side. cheaping out on the, no, no, on no. the smaller boat. It's, it's the same technology, same material, same cabling, same piping same everything just in a smaller package. Well, that's your company's motto, so you obviously it build is. every yacht that way. We bring the super yacht to the size under 24 meters. I gotta tell you, Alexi, what I find very refreshing is that you're so transparent about your building process. I can only imagine that's because you're so proud of it that you're, you feel like, well, I have nothing to hide. Everything I do is it's top notch, so I want to tell people about it. I, I just find it so refreshing because there are quite a few manufacturers out there that are very secretive about their process. And sometimes I wonder, is it just because it's so great or is it because they really don't want us to see what's behind it? I can tell you, if there is nothing to hide, we're not inventing it's a wheel or something here. Yep. We're just doing things which the other shipyards do. We're trying to do it properly with the highest quality materials, yep. with the best hands we can find, and the best management and engineering. It's That's it. There's nothing secretive here. Everything transparent. So, like the owner of, let's say, this boat, does he have like cameras out? Does he, can he just see the process? Like, how does it yeah, work? Yeah, yeah, there's several cameras. The owner, any time of the day, doesn't matter where he is, he can see it on the phone, on the computer. So he has like a, you have Access. like a 
access. Cabinet. Yeah, it's like uh, like his own office. His own online office. office. He can see the design, uh, new design updates, uh, systems. How is construction going? Construction Live report. Live cameras. Uh, survey reports because there's several survey company working on this boat, surveying different things. Yep. Everything comes to the consolidated office, kind of uh, organized the way that it's easy to access uh, certain folders, including financial information. Everything is transparent and you don't need to pick up the phone and call because you can, you can see it 24-7. This is insane. I mean, that's very, very different and very refreshing. All right, uh, what is this? What, what are we, salon? This is a salon. Okay. This so is, are these really size of the windows? Or it's, it's, it's the windows. This is the size of this the windows? This is the windows, yeah. Wow. Oh, I'll stand next to it's, it just so you guys actual... can see this. This is absolutely insane. Now you get the perspective. Wow. This truly feels like a much larger yeah, yacht. You can, you can see at this stage everything is transparent. You can see all the piping. You can see the air, ventilation, piping, everything is insulated. You can see this piping, for example, I don't exactly know what it is. It could be cold water or hot water. Mm -hmm. You can see the, the amount of insulation. This is the drain pipe. This is the only pipe we do not insulate. So it's a free yep. drain. Everything else is get insulated. Okay, silly question, why is there a hole there? <laughs> it's a soft patch. Uh, it's a hole which we're moving the engines into the engine room. The engine room is down below. Down below, okay. Machinery is there. Yeah. So if you need to move out the main engine in a few years and replace them with a hydrogen or nuclear power plant, you can do it without devastating you just lift yeah, this thing you just, off? You just, all you lose is the floor here and the teak deck there. So there is two hatches, one above another, and you can remove and move in whatever you need into the and out of the engine room. What do so, you think, Rico? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's bolted on. It's never welded. It's bolted on. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not really destructive. You see how this is the flooring attached right here. So you cut the flooring, unbolt it, lift it up with a crane, external crane, yeah. same up, and you have a full access to the engine room. So do you have the engines already yes, engines, in place? Yeah, engines and some other machinery is in place. You can see it. Oh, it's covered up, yep, yep. So you can see here is a good example of the insulation. It's a non-flammable fiberglass insulation, about four inch everywhere. Oh, here is, you, you can oh, see. Oh, wow. You see, this is internal bulkhead. You see how we address internal bulkhead with the two layers of insulation on each side. It's more acoustical than thermal insulation because this is the galley area. We don't want, actually, this is the service room. The galley itself is there. It's all aluminum bulkhead. So according to the commercial charter class, which this boat is a commercial charter class. So we have to have a certain kind of fire resistance in the galley area because after the engine room, this is the second source of a fire. fire on board. And we have a fire extinguisher system right in the hood because it's where the fires usually wow. um, uh, initiate yeah. is in the stove. So, so like a real professional commercial. It's, it's a commercial. It's all commercial commercial park galley you can feed probably 100 people at the time with equipment here amazing so it's all commercial electrolux equipment even right now the only sound we're getting in is because it's, the window is covered up with a thin cardboard right now it's already so much it's quieter so quiet here. you guys there's like two other yachts working um being worked on there's like full-blown work happening three more, three more. wait it, one, just two. in this shed yeah yeah. Not including this one. Not including. Not so including this four. one. Four. Yes. And there's full work going on and we can like have a normal conversation. Yeah, this I can take a nap here. This is the service area. This is the foyer. This is the main staircase, which is going through all four decks of this boat. Here we entering the master suite right here. Oh, right here. This is, this is the hallway. Right little, off the galley. Little office. You see also the window right in front of the uh -huh. desk. Here is the desk, yep. owner's desk, and some cabinetry here. And just one or two cables. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not that much. Yeah. No, no, no. Just a few. <laughs> There's just for the light and uh, I forgot for something else. We need cable. For something else? Something yeah. Else. Oh, for a receptacle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, here's the good example of how the oh, it's offloading. interior Hanging. walls attach through suspension, which is welded to the aluminum. So this wall, you see it's not touching. This is the best acoustic insulation, this void, because we have a working area behind this. So it's, it's a galley, so you don't want any noise to come from the galley to the master. So we make sure everything actually calculated, vibration modeling and noise modeling, everything is calculated. And we know exactly how many dB we will have here and how well it's insulated from the rest of the boat. Oh my God, wow. So you see all these cable rounds, yeah. they're also on suspension. We pretty much eliminate anything can make sound. This is the walk-in wardrobe. Ah. This is the shower and from here it's a bathroom. Yeah. So this would be the head of the 145. Yeah, we are in it's the really head of 145. It's really a bathroom at this point. So the total square foot here is 800. 50 square feet is the owner's suite on this boat. That's larger than a luxury hotel room. Yeah, oh, it yeah, is for way, sure. large. Yeah. Large, way large. Way large. For yeah. sure. Well, you have a whole study area and that whole thing, and then the master, and then this, and the walk in closet. And the, yeah. yeah, usually yeah. like one bedroom hotel suite yeah. is less square yeah. footage. So, all these drawings, all the engineering stuff, like I come to you to build a yacht, like where does it all come from? It's all done in house. Here's the engineering department. It's not all the engineers here because we have a lot of like project managers. They have little offices yeah. in the shops. But here's our specialists. Uh... Hi, guys. <laughs> so, this is our chief engineer. He's here in separate room. We have what, eight workspaces here. So the engineers, they're, they're not here all the time. They spend a lot of time on the boats. Okay. And on. On site and yes. then there. This yes. is their base. And it's it's always going something like a little engineering. We, we make some tweaks and doing like some detailing here. All engineering is done in 3D. Of course, at the shop level, it's going to be 2D drawings, which is uh, easily readable by the guys who is actually building the boat, but everything conceived and developed in 3D. Plumbing, piping, machinery, electrical, interiors, and it's all one giant file, mm -hmm. which probably the How big is that file? Oh, I don't know. It's way over terabyte we have a servers <laughs> and of course we have a backups for yeah. backups and because yeah. it's very valuable information of the course. whole boat is in there we will show you a little example cool. like how it looks when the boat all designed in 3d okay where we go next <laughs> let's go to crew quarters So this is a typical crew quarter. Okay. I mean, this is the head. By regulation in charter class boat, we got dictated the size of the free flooring, size of the head, size of the bunks. So where where's the door here? The door is here. This you is, see, this is huge. A it's a generous board. room. Very this seems good very large. And again, we don't use any plastic. You can see here is it's it's American maple furniture, mm -hmm. uh, medium gloss top quality, there is no plastic used on this boat, period. I so, know, you don't like plastic, you like real stuff. So, yeah, I don't so. like what's burn. <laughs> Fiberglass burning. Yeah. So just a quick, like, if I want to get you guys this perspective This is really here. big. Um, everybody knows Below Deck, right? Yeah, um, We yeah, have watched yeah. the show, yeah. and I'm pretty sure the rest of the world well, has. We've also, we've also toured one of the yachts. Uh, yes. These crew quarters are very large compared to what we have seen on other super yachts. Yeah, it's pretty big. I mean, I think there's a closet and stuff maybe where you're standing. That's what I'm yes, assuming, right? Right yeah, here. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's already completed oh, yeah, right here, here. You can but see it's it. protected yeah. with um, yeah. this cardboard. So yeah, so look, look how much, look how much space you, have, you guys space can move around. This is uh, pretty incredible, to, actually. To get ready, get dressed. It looks like every crew cabin has a an on suite. Yeah, an on suite. Yes. An ensuite with a separate shower? Separate shower, yes. Walk in shower. Okay, that's not always normal at all. Oh, that's really Again, good. we're talking charter class, but even on bearing 80, yeah. our crew quarters are the same size. That's amazing. Because it's, it's, it's fair. Somebody really 
calculated at 12 because if it's more confined space, the yeah. person will start to feel Well, I'm starting to wonder how the other yachts we've toured uh, get away with such with small smaller crew quarters, quarters if you say it's regulated. That's so interesting. Uh, for, for commercial charter, yeah. it's regulated. Interesting. If it's pleasure boat, even big pleasure boat, you can do whatever. Interesting. Interesting. But the question who is going to work for you? I people think that a lot of people will be fine with this crew quarters. Very no, happy. You Very will, happy. You will have no restriction in this respect. Everybody would love to work. On exactly. This boat. Yeah. Love to work. They happy, will see. Happy crew. This is the crew mess. It Hello. can see. It can seat 11 people at the time around the table. You're, you're crew yeah. right now. Stay there. <laughs> Wow. So, and then we have more. Uh, we have area. two more crew quarters. You see, this is this doors is really like this. This really nice. Yeah. Wow, there's still so much space. Are you serious? Baby, look at this wood. Touch it. <laughs> Touch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Right? Yeah. This is very generous. I'm very okay. impressed. Now you can see what I'm talking about when I say refit in one week. So everything in CNC, everything is stored in our computer. This is a sub ceiling, sub ceiling which is suspended. It's not touching the metal framing or anything. And all the ceiling, all, all the panels, the wall panels, the ceiling panels, everything goes attached to the sub interiors. So to refit this boat, you have to take it down and apply the new ones. Mm -hmm. Which so exactly gonna be fit in these particular sockets because it's all in the computer. It's all done by CNC machine. So That's all it. the boats going forward, all the bearings are all gonna have this option. So yes. you buy yes. you buy a bearing uh, and then you want to sell it, or you just decided you're bored, um, which is a good good problem to have out of your interior you want to spice it up but honestly like if you sell the boat usually that's when it comes in right right if you sell it and your owner buys it says okay this is not exactly my cup of tea and most of the time that's why they wouldn't buy it because the refit is such a big deal yeah so literally that's phone call to bearing pick out whatever they want new wall new ceilings yeah. you may have a upholstery here and the old interiors and you can have a perfect so the boat doesn't have instead. to come here no no so you literally one ship it to them one container load shipped over and then it's uh, local Ship carpenters in. or interior you have guys. somebody going like uh, we will have supervisor supervisor course, because going. they they have all yeah. the drawings everything on the computer they come with the laptop they know exactly and all of that uh, could be refitted so, in and place everything is marked so we have a number i think it's on the back but each piece yeah. of this sub ceiling has a number yeah, so yeah, yeah. everything is number each piece of this furniture yeah. has a number so everything can be assembled so There's everything numbers. could be repeated like we can do the same in uh, very very mahogany. high end level of ikea style <laughs> <laughs> no i'm kidding obviously but that is pretty insane so you literally could do a, a refit of a bearing in place whatever it is yes any 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 place of the world that is you don't need to bring it crazy to the how long you think like i mean a couple of weeks you can take stuff Depends apart on the put size it up. of the boat if yeah. it's a small boat a few days I'm just blown got away. A I'm blown away by it. Yeah. Well, because I just think uh, also for resale value, somebody buys a bearing and they know when they sell it, you know, they could just say, hey, if you don't like this, bearing is going to make new color for you, new fabric, whatever, yeah. and you just you just ship it wherever the boat is. Pretty amazing. Yeah, you got virtually indestructible shell. Yeah. So it's steel. Replaceable yeah. interior. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not flexing. It's not changing its dimension. Like fiberglass, so you but can, it's shrink. You can, you, yeah, you can it's trust like, it. And after 30 years, all of a sudden, you can close doors, anything, because this damn fiberglass shrink. It's true, and it's flexing. So. And like the panels sometimes on certain uh, yeah. production boats have to be custom made to replace what fell down because it's no longer fit the same way. So that's no, definitely. No, not, not the case on steel boats. All right, let's keep going. This boat is 11 crew yeah. and uh, 10 passengers. Under the lower deck, yeah. it's another deck, which is a technical space. That would not be a guest area. No. No. So it this is the tanks. They all integrate it into the hull. Uh -huh. This particular is a water tanks. So you can see this is the hatches here and you can go through this walk to the engine room. Wow. So you can see everything is transparent. All the tanks will have a side gauges. You can observe here. Yep. There is a watertight hatches mm -hmm. in the bulkheads. So this 
is a service uh, area and service forward area. we have you see there it's already built in walk-in freezer yep. walk-in refrigerator three washers commercial grade three dryers and the ironing machine oh. this is all on the crew area and you can see i'm standing yep. here yep, exactly you're standing with yeah. some yeah, plenty of room. room yeah we're standing on this ladder thing so it's kind of hard to to see it but yeah there's yeah very true We just crossed the watertight bulkhead. Normally it stays open and the crew quarters have a normal door. Yeah. Uh, stewardess can change bedding here, collect the laundry without using this watertight Cra crazy door, door, without yeah. running through the main staircase. In case of emergency, this door will get closed manually or automatically from the pilot house. Okay. Or, or automatically, depends on the yeah. situation. Signal, situations. Signal, yeah. One it. door, another door. Wow, cool. So this is still all crew area here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is crew and this is um, this room. You see, it's have a, a little companion way here. Here is a door. Yeah. So it's a versatility. You can attach it to the uh, to here or guests. to here. Okay, got it. So because door here, a yeah. little door here. Yep. Yeah. So it could be guest so or it could be crew. So that's a crew mask behind you. Sometimes you need a guide, sometimes you need a instructor, sometimes you need a, you need yoga a local instructor. You, yeah, you need, exactly, yeah. So this is a room exactly made like guest rooms. It's either for higher officers or yeah. it's for occasional yeah. crew members. Crew member. Or a teacher for your kids or something. Teacher for something. your kids, yeah. yes. But it's done like a guest cabin. And this is hybrid, by the way. This is a hybrid? Oh, it, is? it is. No well, way. Well, now you tell us. Now you're telling us. Oh, this? sorry. What? <laughs> so it's a, it's, it's a real, it's a diesel electric or hybrid? No, it's a parallel hybrid. Parallel hybrid. Okay. Yes. Wow. I we like can... how he doesn't say anything about it. Yeah, it's a hybrid. <laughs> Okay, tell us what that means and yeah, just give us a little breakdown. All right, this boat is a uh, parallel hybrid. It's a straight shaft drive, diesel attached to the shaft, but um, the gearbox, uh, ZF gearbox, got PTO, PTI connection and a 100 kilowatt electric motor, I believe 700 volts is attached. So when we motoring, the main engines generate the electricity and one working main diesel is enough to feed all this boat with uh, power mm -hmm. and propulsion. So again, our philosophy, we use one engine at a time is working here as well. And we generate electricity while we go in with one engine. No generator needed. No generator needed. However, if we would like to go electric, we can go on the batteries, which this battery bank of this boat is close to 600 kilowatt hours. So we can go about six knots for eight, seven, eight hours electric only. If we want to keep on going electric, we have to start up the generators which uh, has the snoot burner, so they're very minor carbon footprint mm -hmm. uh, left by generators. So there are some restricted areas where you cannot use a fossil fuel engine, period. So for these areas, there are batteries and you can explore it with a slow speed. It's actually what you would like to have, or you can stay there for a few days without starting any generator because your battery bank is enough to support this vessel with the with electricity. The hotel part of it. With the, with, with the yeah. hotel part of it. So it sounds like it's not much. Yes, the main engines are over a thousand horsepower and the, the electric motor is a um, hundred. However, to propel this boat with the speed of eight and a half knots, it will be enough, just 200 kilowatts. 100 on each shaft will be enough to run this boat up to eight and a half knots. You technically can cross the ocean with generators only. I don't know who need it, wow. but you technically can. So where do you store all the batteries for that? In the engine room, there is an electrical room, which is uh, air conditioned at any time. So it's cool. Engineer can come and check. It's all re electrical related, all the electrical panels. Batteries. How um, many batteries is this? Everything. Huh? Ballpark, how many uh, batteries? Volume wide, is three tons. <laughs> three tons of lithium ion batteries. They're marine, they're class approved. Oh my gosh. And they're about six times more expensive than domestic and the car batteries. 
but they're safe. Just quickly, would you say that a hybrid or alternative fuel is going to be the future in the yachting industry? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Not hybrid. Hybrid is a dead-end technology. It will be last for a while while we... It's kind of transitional. Learning how to store the electricity and how to produce the electricity without using diesel yeah. fuel. Yeah. So as soon as the hydrogen or nuclear, and I believe in nuclear more than hydrogen, uh, will kick in, we'll just take out the big diesels and leave it with a couple suitcase size of the power plant and a five suitcase size battery bank. That will be it. In the corner, somewhere in the corner of engine room. Yeah. Wow. Near future. What ten, you, ten, what, years. ten years. Yeah. Wow. There you have it. So now we are in a companion way and it's a two staterooms here. This one is formed a little bit more. You see already some uh, furniture is moved in from our interior shop. This is the head. You know, pretty spacious head for for standard guest cabin. And we have two more cabins VIP. So here's two two guests. Uh -huh. Here's a main uh, companion way the with a staircase, spiraling staircase going all the way up. And here is our VIP. And again, uh -huh. you, you, you see drawings everywhere. Yeah. Uh, absolutely detailed drawings. This is the engine room bulkhead. So the total thickness of this bulkhead close to two feet. And you see we have a, a void of uh, just, just an air. Wow. And this is another buffer between the engine room. So we expect comfort class silence in this space as well as any other spaces in the boat. Here you can see very well how we attach the interior so you can see this uh, suspension so nothing touches the metal structure these spikes were welded to the uh, to the bulkhead and then through the rubbery suspension it's it's attached to the so minimi addition. minimizing the vibration minimizing the sound yes <laughs> what <Yes>. vibration <laughs> yeah what yeah. vibration what vibration vibration we kill at the beginning this 145 is a, a five cabin plus crew uh it's a five or six oh cabin. because Depends. of that extra cabin well, yeah, yeah we yeah. have dual purpose cabin yep. it could be uh, I like the dual purpose cabin. That's a great. It is great, because good, you know certain areas for charter class required eleven crew. Correct. Okay. Certain certain passages required mm -hmm. eleven crew by law, mm -hmm. and normal crew is nine people. Mm -hmm. So we may have up to eleven people, but down to nine, and then we have a six stateroom for for the guests. I think this is what you mentioned earlier, the uh, markings, right, on the on the panels. Yeah, all panels, uh, regardless if it's sub-interiors, if it's interiors, all the elements have its own number, which is carved. So if anything gets damaged, all we need is just this number, and we can duplicate the element on our CNC machine, and it will be identical, so you can replace it. Sis I mean, at the level of my, my this, point. it's yeah, of this yacht to be able to have the standardized option in the future is pretty amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow, that's definitely. And again, a headroom. <laughs> that's pretty much net. I think it's about 225 on this level, 240 at the main deck, and we're back to 225. Um, I'm talking meters. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, yeah. But 225. Uh, yeah, that's a lot. Uh, I mean, I'm 178. A, yeah. It's, exactly. a, it's a seven six. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's very tall. Basketball yeah. player tall. How do you guys make sure everything, you know, fits when you get it in here? Like, I mean, I know we have measurements and stuff, but is there like, do you go further? Um, yes, uh, we actually doing a mock-ups of each and every room. Okay. And we assemble unvarnished furniture to make sure that we didn't miss or overlook anything let me show you here's our interior department interior design department 
All right, we're about halfway through our tour and a lot more to see, so we got to hit pause. In the part two, we get to check out the fascinating mock-up room, which made us feel like we were on the movie set, meet the design team and show us what they do so well, tour the boat deck, the pilot house, all right, let's just call it what it is, the command bridge, the captain's cabin, the bow deck on this magnificent lady. Oh, and wait, what about the flybridge? And for all of you machinery geeks out there, get ready to meet the giant brand new Antalya Free Zone Travel Lift. See you next Saturday and kindly don't forget to hit that like button. And of course, enjoy the outtakes. Of bearing yachts. One more time. Can we do it one more time? Okay. No, yeah, just do, do it one more time. How is this shipyard? Well, we haven't seen it yet. How is the shipyard? <laughs> How is it? I've seen it yet. I'll give it wrong. <laughs> so, these massive skags will de deflate, de de de. Uh, <laughs> Lost the word. The... I'm editing in my head already, so I, I, like, I know you, what you, I need. You know yeah. what you're gonna. I'm, I'm yeah. used to, to the bossy woman, so for you, it's new. For me, it's old. Oh, I'm, well, he's married. <laughs> I'm sure he's got his own boss. <laughs> no well, way. Well, now you tell us. Now you're telling us. Oh, this? sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> you wanna? You wanna? Just went there. Oops. You wanna um, just. Uh, it's kind of important. You, yeah. you want to just uh, give like two, like in one minute, maybe on it on the on the hybrid drive. Yeah. Watch out! It's not mounted. <laughs> oh, it's not. No, it's on oh, a roller. It's heavy. Uh, um, corner settee. Yeah. And a table because by law you are. Da 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 da. Oh, stand underneath here. Hmm? Is it air conditioning? It is. <laughs> okay.